right started with news you can use. Uh, three items we're going to cover today. Uh, number one, uh, cash buyers in the market are drying up. Uh, a year ago, about 40% of the properties were bought vis-a-vis -vis cash. In December, that number was 20, excuse me, 22%, 25% in December, then down to 22% in January, 19% in February, 18% in March, 17% in April, and last month, 16% of the homes in the U.S. were bought with cash. What does this mean? Well, the number one conclusion is that second home buyers and investors are fleeing the market. Uh, second home buyers, definitely, I see that happening. I don't know about investors. I don't see uh, a huge amount of uh, uh, loss in terms of the number of houses being bought by investors, but I do see a certain amount. I think what's happening, though, is a lot of the foreign buyers who were coming in with cash, specifically uh, the, the Chinese who are coming in, Chinese nationals coming in and buying houses are no longer doing that. The Russians, obviously they got their hands full over there in Ukraine. Uh, they're not bringing big chunks of cash and they're not buying uh, at the auctions. They're not buying uh, houses directly from sellers with cash. So that puts more pressure on Gives first of all it gives a bigger opportunity for investors, but it puts a lot more pressure on uh, the lending authorities out there. So specifically FHA, when the market starts to go down as it is, uh, the FHA, uh, the federal, uh, what they call the the GSEs, the government supported entities that provide the money for for housing, uh, Fedi, Franny, Fedi, you guys say that twice, uh, Fannie, May, Freddie Mac, and, and the like. Um, they have to step up. Now, unfortunately, rates now, as of a week or so ago, have peaked 6%. Right now, today, is sitting about 6.17%. Keep in mind, last September, we were at 2.6%. Now we're at 6.2%. That's a huge jump. That means if your payments um, were probably about $1,800 on a, a $300,000 loan, uh, they're now over $3,000 a month. That's a big jump. That's a uh, 75% increase in your payments. So a lot of people can't afford that. So what's happening? What, what are we going to do out there? Because houses are still being bought, but they're being bought at a cheaper price. I'm going to talk about that in a second. What, what happens is no more fixed rate mortgages uh, because people can't afford to pay 6.2%. Uh, what has come back in the market is the darling of the the mid uh, first decade of this century, that what's called the adjustable rate mortgage, uh, along with its uh, redheaded uh, stepchild uh, seller buy downs. And these things are happening in mass. There's a lot of these things going on. So the way that the arms, the adjustable rate mortgages work is the lender will fix the rate at something lower, probably around 4% for the first 10 years. And then it will reset up to whatever the mortgage is, the, the normal rate at that point in time. Now that's better than what we were expecting. We were thinking a, a fixed rate for only about three years, maybe five, but it looks like the arms that are coming out are gonna be in the 10 year range. That's actually really good for the marketplace. That's gonna put a lot more buyers back into play once it's adopted across the broad marketplace. Um, that and that's going to help. And then we have what we used to do. And when I started in the business, the late '90s, early 2000s, um, we had uh, what was called a seller buy down. Sellers can literally uh, discount some of their price, and that money can be used to buy down the mortgage payment that the buyer will have. Um, and I'm not super familiar with exactly how it will work today, but the way it worked back then is, let's say, for example. Uh, they got a, a fixed rate of 6.2%, but if they put 10,000 down or gave 10,000 to the lender, uh, that rate could be 4.5% or something like that. Uh, the sellers at one point in time were allowed to contribute that money to buy that down. It's like basically like a seller finance trick. Uh, that is starting, I'm, I'm hearing that creep back into the marketplace right now. So I think that's a really good thing. Uh, I think you'll see more and more of that happening. And both those are good for getting especially first-time home buyers re-engaged in the market because they're basically 
uh, they're gone out there right now. It's very hard to get one of these folks, um, you know, on, on the on the line to to buy something. Now, there's some markets. There's a number of markets where prices are being slashed very quickly. Um, I'm going to go through real quickly the top 20 markets that have had the fastest price drop, or the way they measure it is how much of your stated sale price has been discounted. So if they have 100 homes that are listed for $300,000 a piece, how many of those 100 homes had to drop their price in the MLS before they sold? So the numbers I'm gonna give you are just the MLS listed properties. Keep in mind, or the MLS uh, things that actually happen through the MLS. So if somebody had a $300,000 house and somebody offered them 280, it wouldn't be in this list, even though they were literally sold for $20,000 under ask. These are only properties that are listed for 300 and then the listing agent had to go back and drop the price to 280. And then it may have sold at 280 or 282 or could have been sold at 260. So typically you can take these numbers and double them. And so, uh, for example, the, I'm going to start at the bottom. We're going to go in reverse order today. New Orleans, Louisiana, last month, 36.4% of the listings dropped their price. That probably means when it's all said and done, something close to 70% of the sales will be below the asking price. So take these numbers and double them. These are just the listed prices and had a listed uh, drop in the price. Stockton, California, 36.6. Spokane, Washington, 37%. Coral Gable, Florida, uh, 37.2. Baltimore, Maryland, 37.5. San Diego, California, 37.6. Keep in mind, it could be as many as double those that percent uh, actually sold at below the list price. So remember a year ago, uh, you used to, at least according to the, the mainstream media, they were telling you that everything was being sold above the asking price. Like, and it came out to, in some markets, it came out as many as 80%. Today, it's 80% are being sold below the list price. Uh, up above uh, San Diego is North Point, North Port, Florida, 39.5. Tampa, Florida, 39.6. Harrisburg, PA, 40.6. Seattle, Washington, 40.6% drop. Philadelphia, 41.2. Indianapolis, Indiana, 41.9. Portland, Oregon, 42%. We're getting up to the top now. These are, these are the areas that have had the biggest drops in the country. Uh, Ogden, Utah, 42.6. Boise, Idaho, we knew that market was overheated. 44.2% of the market. Sacramento, now keep in mind, um, Boise was this was two years ago's uh, biggest market spike. Uh, last year, it was uh, Salt Lake City. And three years ago, it was Sacramento, California. So the last three years, we made predictions and they had the highest spike, Sacramento, then Boise, then Salt Lake City. So we just talked about Boise, dropped 44.2%. Next up, Sacramento, 44.3, shock and awe. Salt Lake City, on top of that, 45.8. So the top three markets in the country the last three years are in the top six in terms of price drop. Uh, third on the list, Denver, Colorado, 46.9%. Uh, second place, Tacoma, Washington, 47.7%. And topping the list with the biggest drop in home prices, Provo, Utah, 47.8. Almost 50% of the homes have had a literal price reduction from what it was originally listed for on the MLS uh, to a lower price. Now, keep in mind, there could have been offers at the original price that were below and it was accepted by the seller and those numbers are not reported here. So this number could be as much as 90% of the sales were below the listing price. So what does that indicate? Um, I'm glad you asked. A couple of things. Uh, either the realtors who listed, the listing agents who put these properties on the market uh, had their head up their backside and didn't know what the heck they were doing and overlisted 90% of the properties. I doubt that. Or more likely, everybody has been caught flat-footed and the market has dropped uh, at a more accelerated rate than was expected and a much larger dollar volume than was expected. 
And that is the conclusion that Fortune magazine had. Um, in fact, a couple of days ago, they came out with an article about this, and they have now dubbed this um, th this cooling down. They called it, it was, you know, in, in the industry, we call it a swift cool down. They're calling it the great deceleration. I think that's the term that's going to stick here long term. So the great deceleration uh, is, is not only here, but it is uh, adversely affecting of the 108 regional housing markets, 102 of the 108 measured last month in May saw dramatic drops in the prices that houses were being offered for, 102 of 108. That's basically nationwide. There are a few, literal few handful of markets that are having very minimal effect um, and, and there's none that are going up. So don't expect an overbid anymore. That's, that is gone with the wind. All right, the great deceleration. Remember that one, actually. That's what we're going to call it going forward. <laughs> so You got it. Okay, uh, that's it for news you can use for today.